Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. In our story entitled Mom Once Perceived Power Over Her Neighborhood, Lawyer says no can do. Then she commits fraud against her husband. Again, no can do. So before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. A very sneaky landlord. This is a fairly long story, but I'll try to weed it down a little bit. So my best friend had moved out of state with her family for several years. She was never really happy there as she's a small town country girl in a big city. So when her marriage dissolved, she decided she needed a change. She was homesick, but didn't want to go back home. She wanted to live close enough that she could visit often, and she wanted to be in a similar setting to home. While on a camping trip, she fell in love with a small town that was about five hours from her children's father and about six hours from her hometown. Looking around the town, she finds a small house that's for rent and decides to reach out to the owner about the details. It's not a great house, looks terrible, hence that's why I call it the crack shack but nothing that some hard work and a little bit of money couldn't fix. The landlord tells her that the house is livable, but it's definitely a fixer-upper. It's been vacant for a while, and they just recently had a man that kept breaking in at night, but assured her the cops were aware and the guy hadn't been back in months. However, he had done a lot of damage. He was willing to make a deal with her. If she was willing to pay for supplies, he would reimburse her, and she would do the work on the house and pay all the utilities. He wouldn't charge her rent until the repairs were complete. He would also draw up legal documents that if she decided she wanted to buy, he would sell it to her for $15,000, as in its current state, it wasn't worth more than that. She thought it over a bit and insisted on having the legality of it all taken care of prior to move-in day, and he agreed. Over the next few weeks, paperwork starts flowing in. She reads it, signs it, sends it back. Before she can move in, she needs to make a couple minor repairs, a plumbing issue, a damaged ceiling, and two broken doors. She does this and sends him the receipts via registered mail, keeps a copy for herself. A few days later, she gets notification that he signed for the letter. A week goes by, then two and three, nothing. She tries to call him, no answer. She emails, sends a letter, nothing. A neighbor tells her the guy's having health issues and has been in the hospital, so for sure that has to be the holdup, so she moves in on schedule and continues repairing the house. Fast forward a year. She's cleaned up the junked up yard, replaced all the doors and storm doors, repaired several windows, plumbing, electrical, replaced the hot water tank, repaired the furnace, and the supplies have arrived to fix the roof. When who finally appears in her email? The landlord pops up, explains he's been in and out of the hospital, but has received all the receipts and photos of the work. Everything looks good. I'll be in touch. So she starts getting together a team of friends who all have experience in roof work, the day before they're supposed to start, another email comes. After speaking to my attorney, I've decided that you've been squatting in my house for one year without having paid any rent. The amounts on your receipts are unreasonable. I won't be repaying you for the work you've done. I will forgive the first three months of your time there. This should more than compensate for the work you've already done. Not even close to the cost of the supplies. You have 15 days which is the minimum notice allowable in her state, to pay the sum of $9,000 or move. If you refuse, legal action will be taken. So she replies, reminding him of the lease she signed and the agreement they made. He responds, with my lawyer has no record of a lease on file. When he sent your copy to the post office, returned it, so technically it's null and void if I say it is. Prove that we ever made this agreement. So she dug through her records, sent him copies of every email he sent her, laying out the terms, Thinking he's older, he's been having health issues, maybe he just doesn't remember. He comes back with, I don't remember any of that. She also had saved voicemails that he left on her phone, including one where he says, we received your signed lease, you can start the repairs and move in when you're ready. Don't forget to send me all the receipts related to home repairs. She offers up a compromise of, I'll eat up the full cost of repairs and pay all the utilities. I'll pay a reduced price in rent to compensate me for my time and money put in. She even made an offer that she would eat the cost of the repairs and start paying rent going forward, but asked that he accept the work already done to compensate her for the repairs already made, which even this was a deal where the landlord made out better as she had put more money into everything at this point. She only made repairs according to a previously agreed upon list. 
Well, we can certainly try to work out a new deal, but I'm still not paying these receipts. You're going to start paying rent. If you want to buy the house, it's going to be $30,000. In this area, even after the repairs, he'd be lucky to sell it for this. She tells him she needs to think about his offer. She doesn't. She calls me as I can be creative. I tell her first talk to a lawyer. She did, and while the lawyer thought with all the correspondence she could probably win the case, she decided the house wasn't worth it to her. So she called the landlord back and tells him after careful consideration, I'm going to have to decline on this offer as I wouldn't have agreed to it before moving in. He then tries to negotiate another deal, still a horrible one, still didn't include repayment of any sort for the work she put into it, says this is his final offer, accept it or get out. This is where I come into the story. Since he was unwilling to pay for the repairs, I sat down and made a list of everything she'd done to that house and devised the following plan. One by one, she and the team that was supposed to help her fix the roof went through the house and unfixed everything she had previously repaired. The new doors were removed, the old ones were still stored in the garage, took down all the drywall she'd put up but not yet finished, removed all pipes, fittings, fixtures, appliances, and every last shingle that was meant for the roof and made a few calls and sold every bit of it to a family friend who happened to be in need of some home repair of his own. A month after she was gone, she received another email from him insisting that she pay up or move out. This is when she replied with, I'm sorry our business concluded a month ago when I moved to the next town over. No need to pay me back for my hard work on your house as I've removed everything that I paid for in order to recoup my cost. I left the house in precisely the same condition as I found it, minus the several dumpsters full of garbage I had to remove from the house and property before I could even begin the repairs. According to my calculations, this fact alone should bring us even up. That was a year ago. Once in a while, she still gets the random email from him insisting she owes him money. She no longer replies. Landlord's lucky the house is still there. Not a pile of ash. And our next story. When Evil Mama Bear Tried to Restart the HOA now, the neighborhood my mother's house is in had an HOA that was disbanded in the early 90s for the pretty stereotypical reasons. Corrupt leaders, misappropriation of funds, etc. I really don't have many details on it since I was very little when it went down, but my mother had apparently been openly aiming for a seat on the HOA council for years. So she was really sore when the HOA was gone because she could no longer run for a position. Fast forward to 1999. Evil Mama Bear had been trying to quote the old HOA covenants in the neighborhood for years and insisted that the rules and regulations set forth when the HOA was active should still be abided by. Literally, no one wanted to listen to her. So my mother started putting flyers around the neighborhood that detailed she was restarting the HOA without their approval and would be its first new president. The neighbors ended up in an uproar over this and showed up to her public meetings. And there she was verbally ripped to shreds as nearly every single homeowner in the neighborhood not only denied their support of another HOA, but also made it clear to her what she was trying to do was not legal. My mother was incensed by this. And no surprise, she didn't even have my father's support, which was something she'd initially been counting on. But he refused from the onset of her scheme. And when the neighborhood all refused to recreate the HOA, Evil Mama Bear went off on my dad for not being supportive of her. After she gaslighted herself into nearly being out of breath, my dad told her she was just looking for a way to lord over the neighborhood and he'd never support that. She tried to argue with him some more, but he just ended the conversation and walked away. Somehow that still didn't stop my mother, though. She went and contacted a sleazy lawyer about trying to get the HOA running again without the support of the residents. Her hope was that there was some sort of law that could reactivate the HOA on different grounds. The lawyer went through all of the old HOA documents and state laws over a couple of days and told my mother there was nothing that could be done as it was not enforceable. And that without the consent and signed support of enough people in the neighborhood, there was no way to legally restart the HOA. Then proceeded to bill Evil Mama Bear for the time he spent looking through all of that. Since my mother hired the sleazy lawyer herself under the table, she had to pay him. But she hated paying anyone for anything because she was so cheap. Now an important fact to note is that my dad hadn't trusted Evil Mama Bear with his money for years and no longer kept joint bank accounts with her and she had no way to access his money, so she filed for a new credit card using his name 
and then used said credit card to pay the lawyer instead. My dad noticed a new credit card statement in his name pretty fast and nearly filed for fraud when my mother came clean out of fear. He demanded she pay off the credit card and then have said credit card deactivated. My mother didn't want to, but he threatened to call the fraud department of his bank on her. I still remember hearing the argument where she tried to claim that he couldn't do that because they were still married and everything that was his was also hers. And that meant that she could do what she did and he'd still have to pay. Dad called bullcrap on that and said he'd contest the charges and get the card removed from his name, which would have left my mother in serious legal trouble for fraud and debt collection. And so evil mama bear begrudgingly paid off the money owed, and my dad cut the card to little pieces with scissors. My mother had the money to pay the lawyer all along, she just preferred to keep her cash and put any expenses she could on my father. But he always stopped her, and she'd try to pull the shared assets logic because they were married though that ended when they divorced. Evil Mama Bear still spent the next few years trying to quote the HOA covenants to the neighbors, but she was always dismissed or laughed at every single time she tried. A few people started referring to her as President Wannabe. To this day, no HOA is formed in the neighborhood again, and even if one did, they'd never vote in Evil Mama Bear. I can only imagine what would happen if she tried to pull this crap in Texas after she moves there. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.